Okay, we're back. Um, and we are all masked up. Uh, so not too worried about overspray in the center of it, but what we can see down the side is we've gone for the uh, tack worm form of demarcation masking. So rolled up thin tack worms of white tack, uh, not blue tack, use white tack because white tack doesn't have the oil content in it, so it won't stain the paint when it's um, sticking to it. And then once we've got their white tack in, then we've attached uh, te Tesla tape um, to that to mask off the rest of the areas we don't want any overspray on. Uh, and as before, we're going to do the pre-shade marbling technique. Um, but instead of using the base color, because we're using three color, tri-color camo, um, I'm going for Tamiya's XS XF4. It's thinned probably about 60-40, definitely to 50-50, but more likely 60-40, so 60% thin is 40% paint, um, to get a really nice, thin, consistent mix that sprays quite well, and because it's quite thin, the pressure's down to around about sort of 18 PSI, um, so we try and avoid any spidering. I've taken the opportunity as well just to take some very, very high grit um, sand and sponge just to go over the paint just to make sure it's uber smooth and you'll also note that I've done some painting here when I was painting on the lower side accidentally flipped the cowling over because I was painting it off the plane when I tried to put it on realized I'd painted it upside down so that's why we've already got a bit of paint here but that's going to get covered over quite quickly um, with the green yellow so without further ado we will check the flow on the airbrush it's looking good and just same as before we'll just start in panel and we'll go on random you can very fine lines getting close the more you vary it the better there we go down the side being careful not to put any overspray, well, too much heavy coat in, you don't want a spider, it is very thin paint. Now I should have said the base colour that we're spraying over is XF50 Field Blue, so we're sticking to that sort of theme of green um, or blue components of green, just a nice dark um, undercoat primer coat it's not black so it's not such a high contrast finish it's a little lower contrast but being the dark blue it matches in with all the green shades of paint um, and it won't harm it works fine with the gray and it'll work okay with the, the sandy tan color paint as well so same as before random patterns more random the better but try and keep within the panel lines to get that panel definition and that'll be quite important when we're doing the camo painting because you want that evenness of weathering across the paint demarcations you don't want it just to stop and start with one color you want it flowing and I've heard say some folks say this takes ages and it's a waste of time and this is it is personal preference Everyone does it differently. Some people will just do block color. Some people will do no post pre-shading. Um, it is just what you want to do. And I'm just merely showing you how I like to do stuff. The main goal here is to get that variance in the paint to break up the color. So you don't have just a, a monolithic paint finish. You've got a nice textured when I say textured, you've got a paint finish that's got highlights and low light areas just to give you that variation to draw the eye in to break up from a one sort of piece of overall color. So it's very, very, very similar. In fact, it's exactly the same as what we did on the first model when we were painting in the US grey and insignia white and the very self same as what we did on the underside of this where we have painted in US light navy grey 
And the other good thing about this paint technique is it's a really, really good way of learning trigger control and paint flow and general paint control so you can use this to practice laying down paint and getting it where you want it get your orientation um, between the, the needle and where the paint's hitting the model it's a really really good way of practicing that knowing that it's only a primer finish or a pre-shade finish and you are going to be applying the top coat which if you really wanted to you could put a decent opaque color down color coat down and it'll hide anything you see the main thing with this is getting the paint thinned properly so that it flows properly and it doesn't leave a textured finish should it leave a textured finish then there's no harm in coming back with say 2000 grit or 3000 grit sandpaper just to flatten it down take away any of the high spots or textures and the other beauty with this this sort of putting this contrast coat down first is that should you want to weather or sand back the top coat you can do that and that's a really good way as opposed to chipping to bring the highlights through the paint uh, without actually having to put your hairspray down and chip down to your colors below that's quite a realistic way of doing it as paint obviously as aircraft fly through the air and if they're landing off a sandy or dirty strips then you're going to get a certain amount of abrasion on the leading edges and the wing surfaces fuselage that's a really good way of replicating that is by gently sanding the surface finish down So all these techniques have their place in the hobby and it, it's good to practice them all at some point just to broaden your own technique uh, ability out. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And we all have to start somewhere. So you just got to go and doing this technique is a really, really good way of learning airbrush control. and detail painting so i think you've got the general idea of what i'm trying to achieve with this finish i will continue get the rest of the upper surfaces primed or so say pre-shaded with this xf4 and then we'll come back when we're ready to start laying down the first of the three camo colors there we go that's the nice motley finish there. So, back in a moment when I've got the rest of it now. Right, so we're back and as before we have got the model pre-shaded. Uh, get this a close up. You can see on the wing we have got there we go, lots of modeling, blotchiness, tonal variation, uh, just what we're looking for. Now, first colour to go down is always the lightest colour, so it's the sandy colour, or tan, as they call out in the instructions. Now the paint code in here calls out for AS15, uh, tan, USAF. So we've mixed the colour of cells, and I think I'm going to start spraying with the wing. So there's a quick sort of overview of what we're looking at now i'm going to be doing this freehand and that's the whole point of this video to show it can be done it's reasonably easy to do so the first thing to do is obviously to orientate the plane um the same way your partners now these plans are one to one and tammy did this so if you wanted to you could cut out each individual camouflage pattern white tack them down so spray the color blank them off, spray the next colour, blank them off, so on and so forth. I, on the other hand, I'm going to go for a freehand camo pattern. Try and get as close as we can to this. 
and that is not only to demonstrate how good this airbrush is doing it but also just to show you how easy it is to do now I'm just putting the pressure back up to 20 psi so the main thing to do with this is to do your outlines first if you wanted to you could put pencil draw line down but I tend just to go with the flow there we go got some flow coming out so we're starting sort of halfway in the middle of this panel and the line swoops down towards there cuts through cuts through there Wavy line here. There's a dip down there. And then comes down to the end of the wing. There's our first line down. Now, if you're not so confident with your trigger control, this is where the trigger stop comes in handy. You can screw that in and then push down on to get air. Try and do this so you can see about my hands blocking it. And then start screwing it back until you get the paint flow you want. And every time you go back to there, you're going to get no more of that and you get your fine lines in. I'm confident enough that I don't need that, so I, I tend not to use that, but that function's there for anyone that wants. Now we've got a line here on this corner, and that comes down. And across. Okay, so there's our first block of tan. Once we've got the colour in and we're happy, make sure we get the lines going down over the leading edge. We want to start filling in. And that's just a case of from the outside in. Blocking the colour in. Working up to the line and then going back forward again. And you can see how the yellow is giving us a beautiful mottled weathered paint finish make sure we get that leading edge okay and then we move to the back of the area and work towards the lines and we're just putting a very very fine thin coats down doesn't matter at this stage if you've got a little bit of overspray so obviously the darker greens are going to neaten these edges up and really sharpen it all up so it's a beautiful thin translucent layers building up the opacity to a point that we're happy and we can just move on to the next area of camera. We'll move the airbrush back, slightly wider spray pattern to blend the coat in. Of course, making sure we get the edges of the wingtips. That's it done. Right, so the next one is here in the wing route, starting from, just plan over a little bit, there we go. So we're starting, I don't know if I zoom in even, might be a bit better, there we go. So starting from here, the middle of this panel. Moves 
there roughly. Goes around. Swoops down. Then goes down over the over the trailing edges. Now we want to look on the side of the fuselage here and we can see that tan patch goes right up over the back and over the front so we can spray those edges in. Just pull the focus out, this is a bigger area. Excuse me. There we go. So we have a line it goes, where does that line go? It starts from roughly here in the wing route and yeah. just behind that last burial. Okay, and then the front one nice sweeping curve up through the canopy here okay so that gives us our boundaries to fill we'll just go over this one again one more time okay we'll start the wing route moving the airbrush back Start working into the camo. Leading edge. Now, if we look at the picture here, Okay, so you can see that's nice painted in there. If we look at the picture, we've got the camo demarcation here, and then this whole central body is tan. So we'll get this line in here, and then we can carry on the fuselage lines over and block this whole center piece in. Okay, so we're starting in the middle of this panel. edges right and then if you look at the side we've got a nice wavy line meeting this line up here let's start in front of here and don't worry if you make a small mistake because There we go. Switch to air just to dry it down. Okay. If you make a small mistake, then um, you can tidy it up with the darker colors. That's why we always spray the light one first. Okay, final line in. Right, so we can now block in all this colour. So, that on the fuselage, spray down the way. Remember to paint the canopy. 
working back from the camo edge back up to the top just remembering when to stop so we don't lose our pre-shading follow over the wings nice steady coats Same on this side. Okay, right. And the final piece on the wings is this piece on the end here. So we can just lay that up near. Keep the cable and cord, air cord out of the way. So we're starting in here. Moving along up here. Round and down. Okay, there's the camera in so we can start coloring now. Locking in the color. And if there you see that flooded it slightly, just dry off the air. And then introduce when it's drying down, introduce a bit more color to blend in that. There we go. And that blends it all in nicely. So when you're blocking in, follow the camera line, the demarcation line around. Right after that, when you're flooding the panels, just leave it. Let them dry naturally if you can. You don't get any paint runs. When it's dry enough, go back in and start blocking in the colour again. Remembering the edges of the tips. Sometimes the masking tape can curl up a bitty bit. Get the edges done. Get the leading edges done. There we go. 
and then just where we've had this bit of overpaint, now it's dried out a bit, we can go back in and blend it all back in. There we go, so that's how I'm going to approach the rest of it. So I'm going to get the last of the tan done and then I'll come back when we're looking to spray the forest green colour. Right, so there is all the tan colours blocked in. So the next one we're going for is this um, olive green colour. Um, so that is XF81 I'm going for dark green it's a very olivey green color I think it's reasonably close to what is on the box art so that's the lighter gray shade of gray um, and again if we start in the wing so we know we've got green here dark green and then this middle section here is the olive green now we need to be trying to orientate so we're spraying away from the first color so we don't contaminate it too much and we basically just need to copy the pattern as best we can In there. Don't worry about anything like that. You can either blend that into your, your feathered edge or we can come back in later on with the pan and touch it in. The trick with this is trying to get as close as you can to get that harder feathered edge rather as the softer feathered edge which would then look more fuzzy, you want that more high contrast demarcation and then spray away from the edge as you block the colour in, so you're pulling back on the paint, pulling back on the airbrush there we go, now we've got that edge done we want to put a camo line down here so okay lead an edge And fill the colour in. And you can see the yellow green pre shading is showing through. That's giving us a nice variation in the overall paint finish. Obviously, being a darker colour, it's going to fill in a lot quicker. So you want to control your layers so you don't lose too much of the pre-shading. So there we go. There's the first of the colours. So I'm going to pause that there because I'm going to do exactly the same for the rest of them. And we'll come back when we're ready to put the dark green down. Right, we have um, painted the forest green and now we're on to the green. So again, I've changed the color. We'll just spray through any of the old green. Check the flow, see that we're happy. And then we'll start. First one is obviously right on the tip of the wing. So it's gonna be exactly how we went with the green. So, 
that in, trace the line in. And that's just a little bit flecky, so I'm actually going to thin this paint just a little bit. And the beauty with these airbrushes would come with the rubber caps, so you just pop the rubber cap on, put the thinners in, and then we'll backflow the air. Be very careful. I usually do it with the lid on. I'm doing this so I can show you. But you don't want to backflow onto your aircraft, so lid on, pull the trigger back, rock the brush, and that will mix the thinner into the paint. Give it a quick blow through. <laughs> To get the thicker paint out the nozzle and try again and there we go a lovely thin paint so I'm gonna come in here dip down and down layer off the top edge there layer off the bottom edge neaten up the line and then blend in the color now this being a darker green it will fill very very quickly so we want to make sure we go easy so we don't lose all that lovely pre-shading the time we work we put in you see how quickly that color fills in bring it up to where the demarcation line is and then leave it so the next one will be really interesting because it's going to unify these two colors so we'll start on the, the sandy side first Just working our way towards the sandy paint. If you need to do hands, to cradly hands to support it, do that. Just whatever you find is easiest. Spraying across away from the, the original colour into the area that needs to be covered. Nice and steady, smooth lines. Move the model as you need to move it. seeing that sorry try again so that's my steady lines just tracing that color that nice hard edge going in there you can get quite close in if you've got thin paint and good air pressure If you make a small mistake, you can blend that into the camouflage. We can always come back with the tan and neaten it up. So once you've got the ed edge established, then paint away from the edge to fill. And then we'll go and do this line here. Then we can fill the colour. So just remembering to keep the airbrush moving, don't flood. If it's looking too wet, move away, or just turn the paint off, switch to air to dry down. 
before you go in and fill some more. There we go, you've got the gist of what's happening. I'm going to go and finish the rest of this paint um, because I'm going to just do exactly what I've shown you and then we'll come back and look at doing some touch ups. And we are back, and there is the painted model. So I hope you can see that we've got some very nice tonal variation in the paint. We've got some pretty sharp um, freehand camera lines. They're not bad at all and there is a couple of areas we probably need to go and tidy up now this is why we started with the the darker color first actually got a little area in here that needs tidying up along the spine of the aircraft there we go so if you want we could come back in and we could tidy up some slight overspray so we just need to clean the airbrush out and this is something I found with these airbrushes from Galeri is they are exceedingly easy to clean out so you just tip out the paint so paint empty paint cup well dirty paint cup now I am somebody that likes to not throw away paint for the sake of it so I put a drop X20A in the paint cup just to get as much of the paint out as possible to put back in the pot to reuse so long as you are keeping your cups clean and your pots clean then free of contamination then there's no reason why you can't pour back however it's personal choice so please don't all shout at me if you don't agree with what I do this is the way I do it you don't have to do it my way uh, blow the airbrush out into the cleaning pot I've got here and then just some IPA cleaners or thinners just to give it a quick rinse through to get that colour out before we go back to the tan colour. Right, so that's the airbrush clean. Quick colour change. We'll find where I've put the tan colour in amongst all this stuff. It's here. So if you notice, I use the brush to the point, I missed a bit of paint on those veins there. And there's a little bit of overspray in here, and a little bit of overspray here. So we're not actually needing very much paint. Just a few drops. So blow through, there'll be a little bit of thinners in there, blow through till we get a steady flow of paint. And then we'll go back in and touch in every area. So we've got a little bit of shadow in here that I don't want so we can blow that back in there right so we need to paint paint these pieces here so just from the top blow down gently on them don't flood them all right we need to, a bit of a spray here so just work our way towards the line and you're not needing much paint at all There we go, you can see it. even I can make mistakes, so we'll either come back in with a darker colour or we can try and just So that's me just making a complete top to that, so we'll come back in with a darker colour don't be afraid to do this because it's thin paint so it's going to be no hardship to come back in and touch in any areas that you think need it tighten up see that beautifully done 
And this is what I'm finding about these airbrushes is that with the right th paint thinning, they're very, very capable of doing fine line detail. So I'm just going to quickly nip around, finish these touch-ins and then we will finish up for this segment of the painting. So there we are. Now all I've done is tidy up this mistake here. One or two little areas. On the whole I was really happy with the finish and I've just given it a quick dust over with Tamiya X22 Clear just to seal the paint and also unify the overall finish and I think I'm very very happy with how that freehand camera has come out we've got lots of tonal variation in the paint um, they've got good tight lines a little bit of feathering in there which is fine um, not just total hard de demarcation so it looks like it's had a bit of field painting maybe applied or touch-ups whatever it's the way I like to paint models um, but I think you can see that the airbrushes this is the uh, Galeri GHAC 98D um, is more than capable of doing tight freehand camo and the beauty of doing this sort of painting is you don't need to mask and that saves time and for me time is very important because I don't have a huge amount of time so if I can get a decent paint finish without having to go through the faff of masking then I'm all the more happier so anyway we're going to leave this set now overnight and then we'll remove all the lower masking to reveal the whole model and we'll look at getting the model deckled and finish painting the underwing stores before we move on to some panel line washes and then possibly we could do a little bit of oil work on the greens and the sand color just to do a bit of lightening and fading work um, and some streaking and I think I want to weather this one up a little bit more than the last one so obviously we'll be doing the exhaust stainings but we're going to look at doing some oil leaks and stains underneath as well so a little bit more work to do on this but the overall mission of this model was to show you how you can do freehand camo with an airbrush um, and I think um, I've managed to demonstrate that. As always, if you've got any questions about the techniques that have been shown today, please feel free to put them down below. I always will take time to read them and I will respond. And if you have any comments or suggestions how we can do things differently, then pop that down below as well because we want a bit of a, a discourse um, and a discussion. I'm open to learn new stuff and I'm hoping that you know some of you might have learned a few tricks and tips from what you've seen today. So, until the next episode when we look at deckling and um, panel line washing, take care and happy modelling.